Welcome back. This time we're going to add our game.jsp to our guessing game with JSP only example project. Recall that the request object is created when the request is received by the server. It holds the data from the request. It has many useful methods. One of those is called request.getParameter. It takes a string as an argument. This will return the value of the variables that are sent from our form. So we're going to use this often. Back with our guessing game JSP only version in Eclipse. At this point, we've created a game number Java class. We've created a JUnit test to test our game number Java class so we can move forward with confidence knowing it works well. We've also at this point created our index.jsp. When we run the program, right-clicking on the project name, selecting Run As, and selecting Run on Server, we now see the index.jsp returning a form that provides a guess. When a user enters a guess, they will click on the Go button, and a request will be sent to the next component called game.jsp. So the game.jsp should take that guess, determine whether it's a correct guess or incorrect. If it's incorrect, determine whether it's high or low, and then provide a message whether the person has won or whether or not they should guess again. So game.jsp needs to compare the guess received from the index.jsp with the target. Too low, it will display a message, guess higher. Too high, it will display a message about guessing lower. And then if it's just right, it will display that the correct guess had been made and how many guesses were taken. If we look at the wireframes, we see that they're virtually the same as index.jsp, the only difference being if the instructions are different, if they need to guess higher or lower, and the whole page is different if they got it correct. So let's make that now. I'm actually going to make liberal use of copying and pasting from index.jsp as needed. Here we have our initial stub for game.jsp. Change the title to World's Best Guessing Game. make that a headline. It's part of the view. On the server side, we need to declare a game number object so that we can use that when needed. Remember, we did that in our index.jsp, so I'm going to go copy that page command and paste that in. Let's add Java delimiters. Several things we need to do. Let's think before programming this part. We need to retrieve the data from the request, compare the target with the guess, adjust message and number of guesses as appropriate. Then output results. That's the view portion below. One thing that's new is using the actual request object to retrieve the data. Recall that request is an object that's generated automatically when the request is received by the server. We do not have to declare it. We can simply type request, and we have access to the object. Type a period, get parameter. This is a method that takes a string argument. The string argument is equivalent to the name of the variable that's added to the request. What are serving as our variable names? Well, think back. In our request form from the index.jsp page, we have various input components 
each of those have a name. For instance, guess is the name of the text box where the user has inputted their guess. So if we use guess here, we're going to get that value. So at the moment, my line goes to request, get parameter, and ask for the value that stores the guess. But I need to put that somewhere so I can use it. In our case, we're using our game number class to have objects to store all of our numbers. So let's create a game number object for my guess. I'm going to use the default constructor and then I am going to use guess.setValue and put the value inside. So in this line, internally, I'm requesting the value of the parameter called guess, and then I'm using it to set the value of my game number. But notice I have an error message. Method set value int in the type game number is not applicable for the argument string. What does this mean? It means we cannot use a string to set the value of a game number. Where's the string coming from? It's because all of the results of the request.getParameter method are strings. So we need to do something to that to convert it to an integer. One way is there's a nice method of a class called integer, and this is parseInt. The parseInt method will take a string and then convert it to an integer. So reading from the inside out, I get the request.getParameter for guess, let's say 500 if that was the first guess, but it's a string integer.parseInt will take a string. If that string can be converted to an integer, it will convert it to an int. So now we have an int inside here, and we can set the value. One thing to note, if the string has any actual string characters that cannot be converted to an integer, integer.parseInt will actually throw an exception. and We'll get an error. So this is a slightly dangerous way to go about this if a user has included something else besides a value in the guest text box. That's one way to do it. Let's do the other slightly different. Let's try the target by creating an int called target value. And let's get that request.get parameter target. Recall that target was stored in a hidden text box. Still have an error. Type mismatch. Another way to say that we're taking something that is a string and we're trying to assign it to an int. So again, we can use our integer dot parse int method to fix that. Then we can create a game number called target and give it our target value. You might ask, why did I do it differently this time? In one, I created my game number and in the next line I requested, converted, and set that game number value. Here I did it slightly different order. I requested and converted, and then I set and created the game number. The only reason I did this in this way was to show you it's possible. I am going to choose to copy this to get maximum, minimum, and guesses. So let's get our minimum.
let's do our maximum. And our number of guesses. And we now have all five of our game values that we need to run the game. Let's do the next part. Compare the target with the guess and then adjust the message and the number of guesses as appropriate. How can we do that? We have our guess and we have our target. Comparison is done with if statements. If target.getValue is equal to guesses guess dot get value what are we going to do guess equals the target else guess does not equal the target Let's handle the easy one first. If they're equal, let's declare a string called msg, short for message. Let's set message equal to congratulations. You got it right in guesses.getValue guesses. So if they get it correct, we're going to lay into the view a message that says congratulations. You got it right in so many guesses. And how many guesses depends on the value of the guesses.getValue. We'll see how we'll use that in a minute when we add that to our view to output the results. For else, we need to do another if statement inside this else section. The if statement should ask if it's less than, otherwise it'll be greater than. I'm still going to compare my target guess value with my guess value. And if target is less than guess value, then the guess was to I. Else, the only other possibility, and I don't have to ask the question, the guess is too low. Seems I have forgotten to put an if in front of my logical expression. So if guess was too high, what do we want to say? We want to say message is equal to something like too high, please guess lower this time. I always like to be polite in my messages to my users. Finally, if the guess is too low, we'll say message too low, please guess higher this time. One other thing we need to do if it's incorrect, and that is adjust the guesses variable. So let's do that here. Guesses dot increment. Remember that will add one to the value of the guesses variable. So it looks like we're following along with our plan. We've retrieved the values. We compared target and guess. Now we're ready to output the results. And the output's going to be a little bit trickier this time than it was with the index.jsp page. Quick review of our wireframe, you can see the reason. If the guess is correct, we do not display a form. We say something like play again. If the guess is incorrect, we need to display the input form. So we're going to have to make a decision within the output section. 
Currently, the output will include our title. Let's let that serve as the welcome message since they've already been welcomed in the previous one. We then need to include the message. Notice we've actually set a message using our msg variable at the top. So we just need to output that. So at this point in the page, a paragraph will be displayed, and we will see whatever the result of the message is, and it should be correct based on the values shown here. We have to make a decision if the guess was correct what to show here versus if it was incorrect. Either we're going to display a guess again message with possibly a link to restart the game, or a form for the next guess. We can include Java to help us within this by using the Java delimiter at the appropriate points. Let's build the decision structure here using Java, and then we'll replace a few lines afterwards with the appropriate output. If, and let's use our expression that determines whether or not the target equaled the guess. So if targets equal to guess, Here we're going to put play again. So I got into Java and I made an if statement with the opening bracket, and then I got out of Java. So what's going to happen here? This is this content, actually text that will actually be displayed directly to the response and displayed on the browser. I need to finish up my if statement though. Notice I got some error messages here. It's because I have not added the ending bracket. Well, the ending bracket's Java, so I need to have Java. One messy thing about JSPs is if you mix Java with the HTML, sometimes you end up with lines that are delimited for a single brace or bracket. This is going to be a little bit more here because I'm going to actually include an else because here's where I want to put the input form for the new guess, then I need to end with, with a curly brace or curly bracket right there. Let's make play again into a hyperlink. And what we're going to do is when they want to play again, we'll just send them back to index.jsp, which will reinitialize things and start it over. So if the guess is correct, we're already done. Message will show the correct value with the number of guesses. And if the target equals the guess, we'll see a simple hyperlink. What we need now is the input form for the new guess. Luckily, we've already coded that. Most of that is coded already in index.jsp. So let's go back over there and let's grab everything from the form tag all the way to the ending form and copy it. And then let's paste it to replace my line about the input form. So if they're incorrect, we will see guess, number, we'll see guesses with dot get value. Recall up in our Java section, we've actually already incremented that. So it if it was one before, it should be two now. We'll have an input for a number of guesses. And a submit button. We're also storing our other game values with their current value in hidden text boxes again. This works fine because all of our input statements our request.getParameter statements use the same names as we did before. So we're going to store these here. The other thing that works great and we do not need to chain is the action because what we want to happen is when they click on the submit button to submit this form, we want it to come right back and run the game JSP again. Keep in mind the server gets rid of the original game JSP, and each time a new request, a new game.jsp file will run. We'll start at the top, retrieve all the data from the request, do the comparison, and then output some results. So 
we should be in good shape. Let's run it one time here to see what happens and we'll save any kind of debugging or tweaking for our next video. I often like to delete the server. This cleans up anything that might have been running in the server before and we run with a new version of our game. So right click on the server in the server window and select delete. The server itself is actually an object oriented component. When we right click on the project, select run as and do run on server, a new object of the server class is being created. So it's totally fresh and new. Here we see the index.jsp, view the source, and we see our original form. We actually see, because we stored in hidden values the target, the actual target we're looking for. This is good for debugging, but not for the real game. We see that it's 555. Good to know what to expect. So let's type 500, a normal starting point in a guessing game such as this, and hit go. Too low. That's correct. Notice we have a little extra period there. We'll want to change that when we fix this later. Please guess higher. Recall the target is 555, so 500 was too low. In addition, it shows guess number two. If I view the source here, I see that the form is included here. What I'm not seeing is a link to play again. So we know that our decision in our output has worked correctly to show us the form instead of the play again link. Let's try again with a, a guess that's too high, about 600. It should say too high, please guess lower this time. Looks like it's working. Guess number three. Let's go with 550. Guess low again. Guess number four. This time let's get it right. 555. Five, five. What should we see? This time it should say, congratulations, you got it in four guesses. And then instead of a form, we should see the play again link. Looks like that was pretty good. Congratulations, you got it in four guesses, play again. We click on that, we're back to index.jsp. The next video, we'll look at this again. We'll kind of explore how it actually is working and we will tweak any small little changes that we want to make. This has been a Piercy production.